Hi guys, Brandon here, and welcome to another commentary video. This one we're going to be talking about something fun that always gets a big rise out of the Dead by Daylight community, and that being tunneling and camping, and obviously people feel either one way or the other about this typically, which is either you play Survivor a lot and you hate it, or you play Killer a lot and you understand it. Uh, but I'm going to try to kind of put it in a way that is a little bit more understandable for everybody using something called the Bell Curve, which a lot of you are probably already familiar with, hopefully. But hopefully that helps explain things, make things make a little bit more sense to you as we go into this. So let's go in and get started. I want to say this before we actually get started is, of course, there are people that will tunnel and camp right out of the gate of five gens just because that is their play style and they take this game a little too seriously. Of course, those people exist. I am not discounting that, but I want to clarify a reason a lot of people do it based on what I explained today. So go ahead and get into it. If you don't know how a bell curve works, it starts off low comes up into this big arch where a majority of the data is and it falls back down and evens out afterwards. So without getting too deep into that concept of what that is and very, very, giving a very, 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 very on the surface examination of that, that is just the, the visual that we're going to be using to uh, indicate what we're talking about today. So if you want to look more into that, you're more than welcome to. But mainly that visual right there is what is important for you because Early on, uh, a lot of people in Dead by Daylight end up tunneling and camping at the beginning of their Dead by Daylight career because simply they don't know any better. They don't know they're supposed to be able to go and get every single survivor. And as long as they get one or two, they probably consider themselves like a-okay. So a lot of people early on in your first like the hun first hundreds of hours, um, usually people just tunnel and camp because they, they they don't get it. Like they don't, they don't understand that, hey, I have to get the whole team or Furthermore, uh, they don't understand that, you know, survivors like to impose house rules of like, hey, that's toxic, that's BM, you shouldn't be doing that. So they just kind of do it because that's what makes sense. It's like, I go after survivor, I hit survivor, I down survivor, I get survivor back on hook, they die, that's good. Um, especially in the, in the sense that the easiest person to chase, uh, you know, absolving things like uh, off the record in DS, the easiest person to chase is the person that's already injured, which is the person you've already hooked. Uh, so... They're just going for what makes sense to them. So it's kind of like a, an ignorance thing as to why they do it and not any sort of malice. But that's where you start to hit the curve and that's where you start seeing the bell shape start to form uh, because like I was saying, a lot of people will start calling you out for that, getting salty about that and calling you dishonorable for tunneling and camping. I think uh, another big thing that's very um, kind of like a, an appeal to uh, emotion with this is that uh, you're not very good at the game yet <laughs> is another thing you'll be often accused of if you tunnel and camp a lot and this will inspire a lot of players to want to improve without it and I would say that this is uh, probably the most beneficial takeaway from that is that yeah you do need to learn to play the game generally without solely relying on this play style because well really good teams will be able to circumvent you if you do that but as a result, whether it be because you, you've been publicly shamed or whether you genuinely want to improve, a lot of players will often stop tunneling and camping, usually in the middle of their Dead by Daylight careers, uh, and start just trying to focus on having more evenly spread like 12 foot games. And that's where you get a lot of people not doing that here at the center. But like with a, a, any standard bell curve, everything starts to go down and settle back out where we started. And that is where this is uh, very, very important. This is the main takeaway that I want you to take away from today. I know it's not a match review, but the main takeaway that I want you to take away today is that a lot of people begin to realize that, A, <laughs> homemade rule books don't matter. You play the game however you want. You played your $20. Uh, somebody, nobody has to like the way you play, but you can play however you want. But I would say more importantly is that you realize that tunneling and camping serve as a good counter to poor survivor plays. We've made plenty of videos before talking about this, but essentially survivors make a lot of mistakes that make tunneling and camping just the optimal answer. How many times have you guys had a survivor unhook or farm as the more common term is farm right in your face. And then that one survivor has sprint burst of life and they just run away leaving the unhooked survivor just stranded and <laughs> ready to be chased. Obviously, the right answer is to chase the person that just got unhooked in your face instead of chasing down the guy that is now like two or three tiles away. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. It's a it's a counter or a punishment for a bad play. Another great example that I get called out for uh, semi-frequently, which is very, very fun, is when the person off hook tries to use their uh, their uh, base kit endurance that you get off hook to try and body block and prevent you from going after the unhooker. If I decide to, you know, go after you, you're going to call me a tunneler, but who got in my way? My job as the killer is to kill the survivors. If I'm trying to actively go after the unhooker, but you get in my way, that's your fault. You decide to put yourself back into the fray. That that built-in endurance is there for you to 
take a hit and then use that speed burst from the hit to run away so you can go heal, regroup, and rejoin the game once you're not in danger anymore. It's not there for you to use offensively. Camping is a similar aspect with this because a lot of times survivors will, will send multiple people to the hook or just be swarming around the hook uh, trying to go for that save. Even with the anti-camp mechanic, they took this into account, thankfully, that if a bunch of people are swarming around the hook, that, that anti-camp meter does not go up very much. And I feel like that's just more of a tell than anything that the even the devs of behavior see that that's a poor play that they accounted for this in the anti-camp mechanic. So if I'm trying to tell you anything like, like forward here as like the point of this video is that a lot of people don't tunnel and camp necessarily because they're being they're definitely people that do do that like I prefaced at the beginning of this video but a lot of people do it because the bell curve is hmm I don't know any better to hmm maybe I should learn to be better without this or I got public shamed out of doing it and then wait there are times where this is absolutely applicable because the survivors are essentially making a ton of mistakes that I need to punish and not just like let them get away with for one reason or another. And a lot of the answers to that is tunneling and camping. So that's why you see, um, I think a, a very big thing that I see a lot, just both at me and a lot of other like uh, very high hour uh, players in the game is like, bro, you have so many hours. I can't believe you still camp and tunnel. It's like, that's why is because they, they're, they're at the other end of the bell curve where they realized, ah, this doesn't mean I'm a bad player. This is just a really good tool to punish people for making mistakes. That That's why they just have been playing the game long enough to understand that they are good tools for punishing mistakes and they could use those for that reason. It's not it's not malicious at all. It's just, oh, well, you messed up. So I'm going to punish you for messing up just like any you should in any versus game. Uh, so. So, yeah, what do you guys think about the bell curve of tunneling and camping? Was this your experience in your Dead by Daylight career? Have you seen other people go through this? Or do you have a different takeaway? Let me know now in the comments below. But that's going to be for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. But I do upload daily, so we'll see you tomorrow. And I don't know why I'm trying to get through this so fast. But I will see you when I see you. That's the point. Goodbye.